we'll get started back again so one of the questions over coffee was that is this tan hyperbolic ml very sacred is it true for all cases is it true for all cases tan hyperbolic ml we said that it's going to represent the yeah yes ha huh, infinitely long field is it is it sacred number ml equal to 2.5 what is the boundary condition i have used while putting this q fin of finite length upon q fin of an infinite length i have taken in the top for finite length which boundary condition i have taken a diabetic boundary if my boundary condition changes my ml also should change this ml of 2.5 is pertinent only to adiabatic boundary condition if my boundary condition changes my ml also is going to change accordingly okay this is just to show that how do we arrive at infinite length in finite way that's all okay so we i guess we had broached up efficiency now effectiveness what is effectiveness effectiveness is we took for efficiency reference what was the reference q fin upon q ideal q fin maximum q ideal effectiveness is q fin upon q no fin best case and the worst case we have taken best case if i compare with it is efficiency of the fin worst case what is the worst case having no fin so that is effectiveness so effectiveness you would like to have which effectiveness is the best effectiveness if this is the ratio of the effectiveness definition that is the q fin upon h ab into tb minus t infinity what is denominator representing there what is denominator representing here no fin case so you want this effectiveness of the fin to be what greater than 1 if it is equal to 1 what does it mean there is no use of putting a fin is less than 1 good or bad? bad bad because you don't want your heat transfer rate to be lesser than no fin case yes acts as an exactly that's what is there here it exactly acts as an insulator which is not is intended when we use a fin we want the heat transfer rate high so you can now you know what it is so you can relate effectiveness of the fin with the efficiency of the fin with the area of the fin upon base ab okay so i think with this you can generate whole lot of equations for effectiveness of the fin and your total heat transfer rate of the fin is q unfin plus q fin what is unfin is this portion where there is no fin is the base and so area of the unfin to the area of the fin okay so that is how we do the bookkeeping that's it so one thing what professor Hemant Kumar Mehta has just suggested, which is right. In fact, just today, two days back, we realized that in today's midterm question paper, sort of we have given that way only. So we have to define what is called as efficiency, overall efficiency of the fin when there are multiple fins. How to handle that in the form of a circuit diagram, where we can add that. It is there in Incorpora and David. Incorpora and David, we will add that. In fact, why I say if you see Incorpora and David. he will not deal so much about this tan hyperbolic ml the way or he will not even draw this figure in fact i myself understood much better when i saw this figure what is efficiency of the fin this figure is there in chengal i mean what i mean is images get retained in our minds without any difficulty this figure is not there in incorpora he tells that in one sentence but that sentence has to get into my mind no so that's why i say changal is better this figure is there in changal okay anyway i like changal very much so maybe i am praising too much that's fine fine so so much about fins okay so now you have a problem yeah uh, anything about the thin fins and thick fins acha what is the thin fin and thick fin by k plus b effectiveness you have it wait a Efficiency. Efficiency, me. 
Is it like that a longer length of uh, few number of things or shorter length of time? Ha, that is there, na? Here it is there, na? Yes, yes, it is there. Then we are seeing uh, different, different divided into one one mm bricks. Yeah, that is there, no? One can now the concepts are there. Whether I can compute, no, no. Whether it is a thick fin or thin fin, no. I, I, I may be wrong. You just correct me. Um, type of equation or derivation related for that particular thing. Or thickness of the fin yes, matters in, in case of the So, if I understand your question correctly, what I understand is that, see we are trying to optimize two things. One is spacing of the fin, another thing is thickness of the fin for a given material of the fin chosen. Is that right? So, your question is how thick should be the fin and how it should be optimally spaced. Is that right? But one can compute for once I decide on a configuration. Once I decide on a configuration, when I say configuration, what do I mean? Fin can be of different types, right? Let us say I decide on in this case, for example, I decide on annular fin cases. So, now the question is thickness and the fin spacing. I have to play with those, with this chart, I can get those numbers. I can then decide which one is the best. Does that answer your question or not? I am not too sure. sure. Yes. And the efficiency graph is given. Correct. But it will vary at each. Yes. So, will it affect on this? Definitely it will affect, it will affect, but then I will have to sit down and do the calculations myself. But are you asking for general derivations? Yes, I vaguely remember long, long time back something like that thick and thin fins I had read somewhere. So, maybe that is what you are broaching up. I, if I vaguely remember that is there in Dhamkondwar. During master's time, I remember. What is the maximum value of the thickness? Those, those things uh, cannot be given as numbers. Hmm. So, in general, thin, closely spaced fins is better as opposed to thick for. No, actually, now I remember. I think I can get back. I do not know whether I have the Mkundur or not. No, actually, in few textbooks, yes. Thick and thin fins are separately dealt with. I can understand that. Uh, I do not recollect what exactly is a thick fin and what exactly is a thin fin. Okay, we will write down. P by A, that thing will Yeah, no, but, yeah, but there are standard relations derived. So, we will write down, I will write down, but all that actually is covered in postgraduates, but I anyway nevertheless let me put thin and thick fins and then let us see whether we can calibrate accordingly. So, is that okay? So, now, but by and large I guess we have covered the basics using this I guess one can cover several other things. Okay. Ha. So, we will move on to transient conduction because the idea is we will spend half an hour now on transient conduction half an hour to 40 minutes okay. and then whatever wherever we are we will stop there and we will start taking feedback from you whatever time it takes. That is the reason why we have put at 4.30, okay. so that there is no imposition on ourselves on the time to leave. Okay. So, the first thing here is here, so far we were dealing only with steady state conduction. We never bothered for temperatures being varied with time, but now we will take up a simple case. We always go from simple to complex. So, in that pursuit we will take up temperature as a function of time alone, but not space. So, that body in which the temperature is a function of time, but uniform all over is called lumped body, because it is lumped everywhere. It is lumped, so it does not matter where the temperature I am taking. So, temperature is same everywhere, but it is changing with time that is lumped body. So, let us see how do we handle this. So, this is what I have just taken copper ball and potato example, but it is fine copper ball because thermal conductivity is quite high, potato thermal conductivity is not so high, potato's thermal conductivity would be copper thermal conductivity. I think we should be having the feel of these thermal conductivities as a teacher. What is the thermal conductivity of copper? 386. At least if I know it is of the order of 400, fair enough. Thermal conductivity of water 
thermal conductivity of air 0 0.02635 at room temperature. It tells you see one is 0 0.02, 0 0.6400. Morning we were showing order of magnitude that tells you how much is the thermal conductivity different. This number should be there in our minds. Should I buy heart or should it come naturally? It is up to us, but we have to know those numbers. I do not know. We need to know those numbers. Otherwise, we cannot convey it to our students properly. So, here also I can answer this straight away through thermal conductivity. Why? Because so I have thermal conductivity of copper very high as opposed to thermal conductivity of pot potato. Why did I ask thermal conductivity of water? Because potato's thermal conductivity can be taken as water because potato is full of water. So, thermal conductivity of potato is around 0 0.6, but copper is 400. So, copper is logical that temperature gradient should be k d t d x. So, d t d x will be less if k is high for copper as opposed to potato. Okay. So, now let us take this lumped body. I have taken a hot body and thrown it into cold water. Actually, this I am I am going to, I know all of you would have done tens of times. Nevertheless, I want all of you to derive me along with me after the coffee. I know you are all little bit rejuvenated, but still let us derive this. Why? Because I am going to give experimental implications of this equation. We can design at least couple of experiments based on this simple derivation. Okay? It is innocuously simple, but it is having very deep understanding. Okay, let us see what is that. Okay. So, now I have taken a hot body and immersed in a fluid and the fluid temperature we are assuming that the fluid temperature is not going to vary with time. My fluid sink is sufficiently large that my T infinity of my fluid is not going to change with time. Okay. So, if I do that let me write my first energy balance equation which is what we do always E dot in minus E dot out plus E dot G is equal to E dot S T. So, I have a body, this is my control volume. Okay. What is E dot G here? 0, there is no energy generated. Okay. Now, what is E dot S T? Rho V C P D T rho is your density of my body not fluid, V is the volume of my lumped body, C p is specific heat of my lumped body, d t d t is the temperature gradient with time. Now, what is there here? E dot in is there or E dot out is there? It is a hot body out. Okay. So, E dot in is 0. So, what is E dot out? What is the mode of the heat transfer for the E dot out to occur? Convection. So, that is minus H A S into, into T minus T infinity, T infinity. Is that right? So, if I rewrite this equation, so what do I get? If I write, come on, do it for me. Take T minus T infinity as theta. Okay. So, if I push this h uh, this negative sign inside what do I get h a s t infinity minus t equal to rho v c p d t d t. Okay. And what do I get for t infinity minus t minus theta okay. and what is this h a s by rho v c p or rho v c p by h a s what is the unit of rho v c p by h a s per second or second? Second. It is second, is not it? Kg per meter cube, meter cube, joule per kg, h is, what is the unit of h? Watts per meter squared Kelvin, that I can write as joule per second meter squared Kelvin, meter squared. Everything gets cancelled out, you end up with seconds, rho v c p by h a s. So, what do I get here? What do I get? H A sorry minus theta equal to yes yeah 
joule per kg Kelvin. You are right. Otherwise, that will not get cancelled. You are right. You are right. Minus theta equal to what do I get? Come on, you are not helping me. I am not supposed to do myself. Yes? D t is not going to be there because t I am writing in theta. D theta by d t is on the right hand side rho V C P by H A S. Let me call that as tau. Okay. So, if I separation of variables if I do minus d theta by theta equal to equal to d t by tau. So, if I integrate this between theta i to theta and this I can write 1 by tau integral of d t 0 to t, what do I get? And push this minus side this side. Can I push this minus side this side? So, what do I get? theta by theta i equal to sorry log of theta by theta i log of theta by theta i is equal to minus t by tau. So, this implies theta by theta i equal to e to the power of minus t by tau or t minus t infinity upon t i minus t infinity is equal to e to the power of minus t by tau. Okay. So, now what is what does this tau mean? I am now flipping back. Are we through with the derivation? Yes. So, what does this tau mean actu actually? We call this tau time constant, time constant. Okay. So, what is this time constant here defined? first order system means, this is actually a first order system. In fact, the same equation you have seen in first order equation, first order systems definition in measurements. Is that right? Everything is same. Even in simple RC circuit, it is the first order system. Okay. So, here time constant if you see, it is resistance into capacitance. It is resistance into capacitance. Now, how can I utilize this before I move on to heat transfer rate and all that? How can I use this equation for, for various measurement applications, for various measurement applications? Before we go to measurement, let me go to this problem. I am going half hazard, I know, I am consciously doing that. So, I have taken a small thermocouple, I have taken a small thermocouple. And here, this thermocouple can be approximated as a sphere, and the convective heat transfer coefficient between the junction and the gas is taken as h equal to 400 watts per meter squared Kelvin, quite a high value. And junction physical thermo pro thermophysical properties are k equal to 20 and Cp equal to 400, and density is given to be 8500. So, determine the junction diameter needed for the thermocouple to have a time constant of 1 second. If the junction is at 25 degree Celsius, I want all of you to solve this problem. If the junction is at 25 degree Celsius and is placed in a gas stream at which is at 200 degree Celsius, how long it will take the junction to reach 199 degree Celsius? Come on, solve it for me. Yes? So, I have k equal to 20, C p equal to 400, rho equal to 8600, junction temperature is thermocouple initial temperature is 27 degree Celsius. Okay. Tau has to be formed, tau is given, tau is given to be 1 second, but what is question is diameter. So, tau is given to be rho V C p upon H A S, is that right? Tau is equal to rho V C p upon H A S. So, you see here tau is equal to rho V C p upon H A S. So, tau is known to be 1 second, H is given, A here is or pi d squared. So, into rho pi d cube that is the volume, pi d cube by 6 is the volume C p. So, you get diameter equal to 6 H 
tau t into rho C p, if you substitute, what is the diameter you are getting? Does that make any sense? What is the diameter you are getting? Into 1000, if I make, I get 7 into 10 to the power of minus 1, that is 0.7 mm it should be, 0.7 mm, 0.7 mm. What does this mean? It means a lot, it means a lot. For planning my experiments, it means a lot. Let us say, I am measuring a flame temperature. Let us say, I am measuring a flame temperature. We all know, any fire or flame, if I am measuring a flame temperature, and my flame for some reason is going to vary with time. I want to capture those variations with time, let us say. And those variations of flame temperature are less than, are of the order of 10 seconds, let us say. They are varying of the order of tens of seconds. Then my thermocouple time constant should be faster than that or slower than that, faster than that. So, that is why I have taken 1 second. The problem here given is 1 second. Okay. It is very nice problem and here h is also very high, which is quite high, okay. 400, 400. So, if you are, the time constant of a thermocouple is not dependent on the properties of the thermocouple, they are dependent on the environment in which you are going to measure. For example, here h, if the h is high, my time constant is going to be, time constant, go back rho V C P by H A S, that is why I made you right. If H is high, my time constant is going to be less. If I am measuring temperature of a water, whether it is natural convection or forced convection, its time constant will be much faster than what I am measuring in air. Because we have ingrained somehow that thermocouple material decides the thermocouple time constant, it is not so. Where we measure is what is important. In the morning, I was telling in rarefied gas dynamics, it is very difficult to measure thermocouple uh, temperature, because h is there of the order of 0 0.01. Now, how much time it will take to reach steady state? Perhaps very long, perhaps it will not reach steady state at all. That, that is the meaning, that is why I said this, this sounds very innocuous, but there is more depth in understanding this. There is more depth and you see 0.7 mm and flame temperatures we usually for measuring flame temperatures, the diameter of the thermocouple is of the order of 25 micrometers, means how much mm? 25, 20 to the power of, when you can anyone help, because I cannot think, 0 0.025 mm. What is my hair diameter? Hair diameter is 75 micrometer, that is how I think. So, 25 micrometers means, 3 times lesser than my hair diameter, I should have the thermocouple bead size, not the wire size. Then only I can capture the flame temperature properly. And not just the flame temperature, here we are not just talking about the steady state temperature, temperature fluctuations of the flame. Because burner is going to burn and there are going to be temperature fluctuations of the flame. If I have to capture that, my thermocouple has to be faster than the temperature variation of the phenomena what I am capturing. That is very important. That is, that's, that is, that is what this little fellow tau equal to rho V C P upon H A S is going to tell us. Okay. This is going to aid us in designing of our experiments, designing of our experiments. Because we always think that we put a thermocouple anywhere and we can get anything and everything. That is not true always. That is not true always. Okay. So, so much about this problem, yeah. yeah. So, in what professor is saying is that, what will be the time constant, how will the time constant compare with forced convection and natural convection for a given fluid, let us say air. This room is filled and now fans are rotating, that is forced convection. Same air temperature I want to measure in natural convection mode, fans are off which one, in which case thermocouple will respond faster? Force convection. So, tau depends, the thermocouple response time depends on the environment in which we are measuring the temperature. Okay, that is very important. Another thing, now let us get back to the same equation, let us get back to same equation. So, that is 
rho v c p. Now, I do not want to see this equation in this form. Let me get back and try to see this equation in a little different form. That is, let me write back my equation as rho v c p d t d t equal to h a s into t infinity minus t. I am getting back to the same equation. You might be wondering why am I revolving around that. You will understand little while from now. Now, let us say t infinity, I just want to measure the heat transfer coefficient. Heat transfer, I have, now let us say I have a flame, I am going, taking back again the example flame. Now, in the flame, I insert a body, let us say that body is a small body. Why I am taking small body? Why I am taking small body? Because I want to make it lumped, because this equation is valid only for lumped. If I take a huge body as huge as this, then it may not be lumped. So, to make it lumped, I have taken a highly thermal conductive material, either copper or brass or bronze or stainless steel or aluminum. I made a small ball, spherical ball. Now, I want to measure the heat transfer coefficient around that ball. That is, I have a flame and I put a ball here. Now, I want to measure the heat transfer coefficient around this. Can anyone suggest with this simple equation? how to measure that heat transfer coefficient? Yes, it is possible. Now, this ball inside that ball, let me embed a thermocouple. Let me embed a thermocouple and I measure temperature versus time plot. I measure using a data logger, I measure temperature versus time. It, it picks up, some way it is going to pick up. Now, now, yes. So, now I have temperature as a function of time, because I have measured it. So, I get from temperature versus time, I get d t d t okay? and I know rho v c p, I know a s and t infinity I know and t I have, I have, I have measured and I have measured. So, I can get, I can get heat transfer coefficient. People do this, people do this. Now, let us say this I just took for external flow. I can do the same trick for internal flow also. Now, let me take a pipe, let me take a pipe, simple pipe. Okay? I will take questions, just a minute. I will take a pipe and in pipe, you would have seen in most of the papers, you would have seen they use copper bodies, small copper blocks for Mangesh Nalavade was using it, but he was doing steady state experiment. So, there are small copper blocks, if I have a test section like this, you imagine square test section and in this test section, I am putting plenty of copper blocks and each copper block. I am separating it out by a wooden piece. Why am I separating it by one wooden piece in between two copper blocks? So, that one copper block does not thermally talk with the other copper block. Okay? Now, in each copper block, I put a thermocouple. thermocouple okay? So, now why I have taken those copper blocks will be very small. Very small means thickness will be 3 mm, maybe width is 25 mm and length is also around 10 mm. Why am I taking these small little dimensions? So, that they are lumped, so that they are lumped. So, if they are lumped, now all of a sudden I will draw either hot water or hot air directly into this, directly into this. What will I measure now? I will measure, I will measure, one is fluid temperature I will measure another one is, what is that I would call lump temperature, I would measure. Okay. So, fluid temperature, because I have generated some more hot air, all of a sudden I have asked the hot air to enter into my test section, which is this. So, what will happen? My fluid temperature will go up like this. After a while, because there was a cold air, it is picking up, picking up and then it will become constant. Now, what will happen to my lumped body? How will my lumped body 
temperature response that will also pick up something like this. Okay. Now, I will choose this portion, why do I choose this portion? Because my t infinity now has become constant, otherwise my t infinity is also function of time, which is not what case I have derived this for. Okay. So, now I have to do some little rearrangement to get my h, what am I trying to do? What am I trying to do in all these examples? I am trying to devise methods to measure h in different class of problems. I showed one for external flow and I am now trying to show for internal flow. Okay. So, what do we do? Rho V C P same equation rho V C P d t d t. If I take, I will take, I will call this as t initial, t final, okay, t initial and t final. I do not know whether you are able to see it. This is t initial and this is t final. So, now let me integrate this. So, because I am looking for h. So, h equal to rho V C P upon A s into what do I get? T infinity minus T d t upon d t. Am I made a mistake? A reverse. Okay, let me rewrite this. So, that is h is equal to h is equal to rho V C P upon A s. Uh, right, d t upon t infinity minus t d t. Now, I have to integrate this. Numerator will get integrated between t initial to t final okay. and denominator will get integrated between small t initial to small t final. So, that is small t initial to small t final. What is this below denominator? What is this? What is this? If I have to show in the figure, that is this area under this curve. Is that right? So, what do I understand from this equation? Can I get this or not now h? I have measured, na? I have measured all the temperatures. So, I know all the temperatures. So, if I find the integral, t infinity minus t, this I can find out either with Simpson's one third rule or trapezoidal rule, if I have temperature as a function of time. So, I can find heat transfer coefficient even in internal convective flows, but only condition is that what all care I should take care, what all precautions I should take care, I should devise my body such that it is lumped, that is why I have put wooden pieces in between so that one body is not talking to another body. If I make full test section full of copper, then it is not going to become lumped body. And another beauty of making small, small pieces is that I can capture local heat transfer coefficient, that is the beauty, that is the beauty of this. So, what I wanted to tell by taking these two examples is that, what we read as rho V C P d t d t h a s t infinity minus t v which we routinely derive in the class has tremendous experimental implications. Experimental implications, not only this, you can you can go on devising your method. To be honest with you, my first my first PhD student on flames, on premixed flames, he is indeed going to measure heat flux this way, heat flux and heat transfer coefficient using this. While teaching only I understood. What I am trying to say is that if you teach more involvedly, it will give you ideas for your research. Okay. Fundamentals definitely help us in research, they are not two disconnected things, they are both connected. The more we get involved in teaching, in teaching of fundamentals, the more it will help us in doing research. That is the reason why I took examples, I can go for measurement of H on and on at least two or four, three more examples, but I will stop here.